Alright, today we're going to be talking about Silver Centurion in Act 8, and he is so good for this content, man. Like, I was taken aback with just how much he does in Act 8. So, I chose 6 paths to showcase and 5 bosses to showcase as well. Um, he obviously does more paths, but I just chose to, like, lower it down to 6. And, of course, I'm doing the whole pass because we'll be here for way longer than we need to be. So, um, this is the Weapon Sarm node and the Clean Slate path. Clean Slate is whenever they throw a special attack, they gain debuff immunity for an X amount of seconds. Um, it decreases with like each debuff that like he had when he launched a special attack. But Silver Centurion just doesn't care about that at all because he is all passive. So, like his plasma, his shock, it's all passive. And when we disarm the node, we get plus 400% increased special two attack damage. So it leads to some pretty nice numbers. But I I don't really like how DOT isn't affected by that. Like, you can see that our Plasmas didn't get increased damage by that much. So, that kind of does suck. But then again, I feel like he's still really good for this node overall. So, that was like a minute in length, which is definitely not bad. That's actually one of the longer fights in the showcase. Just because the other fights in the showcase, he just does so fast. So, moving on in the path, this is a Mojo. Mojo, of course, is like a notoriously hard defender. Uh, for me at least, but then again, I am saying that owning a rank 4 human torch, so <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying that. So, uh, yeah, pretty annoying defender. Silk Centurion is still a really good option for this just because of A, he counters the node really well, the clean slate part, and B, he is a pretty alright mojo counter, like, in his own right, because he doesn't get any buffs besides dexterity and um, his armor up, but his armor up is permanent, so... You don't have to worry about like the life he'll take that away at all. So I I don't know. I, I like him for Mojo. He's not the he's not like the best Mojo counter by any means. That's like uh Human Torch, Spider Man's one ninety nine. But he's a pretty decent one at least. Like he doesn't gain any buffs that would just make him degen to death, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, moving along, um this Mojo playing very passive which is very annoying. Uh, I triggered the degen there, but I knew the fight was going to be over anyway, so yeah, there is that. That was also like a minute, I believe, which is a pretty good time as well. Alright, moving along, this is the fortification and the node where whenever you hit the opponent and they have an armor up, they they place some bleed on you. So, um, so Centurion, he doesn't even need the fortification node to counter this because he is bleed immune at base, but... Every time we hit him and he has an armor up, we're just going to get a ton of furies because of the fortification node. So the damage goes pretty crazy like later on in the matchup. So we let him throw a special attack here so he'll get an armor up. And you can see that we're starting to get a ton of furies now. And also, every other time he throws a special attack, he also gets like more armor up. So it stacks beyond one. And so we get like a ton of furies now because every time we hit him, we get two furies now. So, it's a really fun node, um, just any type of an armor up destroys this path, just because, like, you get immunity to bleed, even though, certain, even though Silver Centurion has that at base, and you just do, like, a ton of damage there. Moving along on the path, this is a Cyclops with the same exact nodes, um, that it's, like, the same exact play style, you just build the special attacks, uh, get the Furies from Fortification, and then you just do a ton of crazy damage. So, I, I really like this lane. There's a lot of Act 8 lanes that I just found really, like, awesome and really, like, unique. Like, I'll show you, like, I think in the last path that I'm showcasing here, it's a really cool path that requires a pretty, like, unique playstyle. So, it's really interesting, and I really like that about Act 8. I feel like there's a lot of, like, different ways to approach the fights in Act 8. Like, the Black Widow boss, for example. I made a video about her, and I, like, did the last phase like completely like how you're not supposed to do it pretty much i just like didn't mess with their traps at all but then again i'm getting off topic here he is just like absolutely destroying this fight and uh yeah look at that pretty nice that was i believe also in the 40 second range so yeah pretty good time over there remember when i said that like there were just some paths that were completely made for silver centurion this is one of them. This is a Rage 1.5 and Combo Party node. So the damage is capped at 1.5% of their maximum health, which is, it just like rules out a ton of characters. 
but Silver Centurion does not crit, so that means that he will never hit that 1.5% damage cap. And also, um, Combo Party increases your crit damage rate, right? But for Silver Centurion, it increases shock potency for him. So he just does a ton of damage, and it's just a really good time. So... There is really no specific rotation for this lane. You just play him normally. Um, you will notice here that like there is a bit... I wouldn't say this is a bug, but it's just a really weird interaction. So we get off the plasmas. We have 8, right? So we should be doing a ton of damage. But the medium attack burst damage is also capped as well to their maximum health. To 1.5% of their maximum health. That... I don't know if that's like intended because like... It is a red number, so it should bypass that. But I don't know. I, I, you know, like, who knows? They could have changed it just for, like, this Act 8 lane. But yeah, that was, like, a super fast fight. Like, that fight was insanely fast. And now this is a Shang-Chi in the same path. Um, same rotation. What I, what I noticed here is that they really, like, place characters that are so easy to like stay close to with their special attacks like wolverine he just does like a quick lunge for and they can just like immediately go in shame shang chi's the same exact thing so like these fights were pretty much made for solar centurion in my opinion because like you literally are so close to them for the whole fight so you're like always locked on to them and then it just makes for like a really easy time for him to keep up his debuffs to uh, drop the SV2 and do some massive damage. It's just a really good time for him. And I feel like he is the best counter for this path. Like, out of all the characters in the game, I feel like it, he is the best for this path. So, um, yeah. He's making quick work of the Shang-Chi as well. Just incredible, incredible performance from him so far, in my opinion. So, moving along, this is the Aspect of War, Immovable Object, and Parry Vulnerability lane. So, basically, um... Aspect of War is annoying, right? He has a slow debuff, so that's great. Parry Vulnerability really increases his damage output as well, like of the shocks and the plasma. And yeah, he's just super good for this lane, you know? Like, he has one of the easiest slow accesses out there. Um, the special attacks of the opponents are, like, really easy to stay close to. So, like, he is just really, really well made for this path as a whole. So, we get off our debuffs. Um, we can counter his SP1 with the heavy attack right there. Like, that's perfect. <laughs> like, that that was, like, actually a really clean thing. I, I didn't even realize. But, um, yeah, it's just a really good path for Silver Centurion as a whole. I think we go to the SP2 now to try to finish him off. And, yeah, we just drop it right here. Nice damage. And then a massive burst at the end. He is insane for this path, in my opinion. I like how they added the immovable object node so you can like parry after the aspect of war has like run its course but like he finishes the fight before that even happens <laughs> so yeah that's just pretty cool it just goes to show that Silver centurion has some pretty amazing damage i think it's quite underrated just how strong his damage is like yes it does take a bit of ram going to the sp2 and all that but it's really reliable and it just leads to a ton of burst damage that can like bypass a ton of nodes so yeah in my opinion such a criminally underrated character, man. Like, it's insane how underrated he is. So, we get the SP2. Now, we just need to do the double mediums. Actually, we go for the slow first because she has a special tech ready. So, um, yeah. I like I like playing around with the slow duo because, like, it does require a bit of a different play style. Like, you have to kind of not... You don't have to stop your rotation, but you have to, like, make sure that you can apply the slow every so often. Or else, like, you'll just get wrecked by Unstoppable. But, uh, yeah really smooth fight there that was about like 50 seconds i believe as well all right moving along this is a scrap wars and dress code node um this path really really feels like i don't know i feel like text work for it but you have to play really really like well well not you don't have to play well but you, have, you just need to understand like sometimes you'll lose your armor up and you seem to not freak out when that happens like it happens in this matchup and i'll show you what i did so you can like Whenever you want to do this path for yourself, you'll know like what to do whenever you lose your armor up buff, and they go unblockable. So I drop the SP2 here. Usual like rotation or self centurion because like not much changes about his rotation. It's just that like sometimes they will go unblockable. Like right here, he's gonna go unblockable, right? So I just need to like make sure he doesn't throw the SP1 while he's unblockable, or else I'll just get like wrecked. But um, so yeah, I like I kind of waited out a bit. 
I just slow my combo a little bit so like the armor will come right before I throw CSP1 and uh, yeah now we have it back and things are just going back to normal so yeah it does it takes a bit of like you have to like kind of be aware i guess like if your armor is going to fall off or not and then you have to like play around that so i don't know this path is obviously made for cosmics right but if you don't have like a really strong cosmic you can use a tech champion as well and of course i'm going to pick silver centurion for my tech champion so uh yeah a uh, really smooth fight though um there wasn't really much struggle besides like him going unblockable for a split second but uh, yeah really straightforward fight well that's a lie it's not straightforward um <laughs> a really complex fight but a fight that silver centurion can definitely do so now this is the havoc in the path um this havoc kind of caused me a bit of trouble just because um you know he plays really passive when he has his sp2 he just like never wants to throw it so that can always cause some issues but like I said over there in the Punisher 29 fight that it's okay to lose your armor up. Yeah, that's not the case for this fight at all. <laughs> because um you're just you're just doing a ton of energy damage to Havoc at all times. And if you lose the armor up for even a second, you're just gonna get detonated to death. So like you cannot lose your armor up in this matchup. You have to play really aggressive, you have to make sure that he always throws a special attack. And I messed up in the beginning because I threw my SP2 not knowing that i wasn't locked on so um i missed out on a lot of damage potential and now i have to like start the rotation over so it's really frustrating like right there it was really close on like losing my armor up as well and that would have just like ko'd me straight away because i had a ton of shocks on him so like you have to play really really aggressive here you have to make sure that like he'll always throw a special attack and uh yeah that's why I'm like, is he really the best for this? Which, obviously, he's not the best for it. Like, that goes to the cosmic characters. But, um, he is pretty good for it, I do admit. So, moving on, we're just playing normally now. I think things have settled down a bit. Um, yeah, that, that other time was so close, man. I was like, I'm really about to get KO'd because of crumbling armor. But we survived. Um, yeah, this fight, though, it's a bit of a long one just because of my mess up in the earlier stages of the match so here we drop the sp2 though get some pretty nice burst damage actually it's not nice because havoc has a ton of energy resistance and i'm just like did they really think about this why would they give a mutant character energy resistance when like their counterpart class is like all energy damage it's just it doesn't really make any sense right <laughs> all right so moving on we have this power technician and dress code node and also a special burst lockdown. And when I said back then that like there are some pads in Act 8 that are really interesting and they have like a really different play style, this is one of them because on one hand you have power technician, right? Or you just parry and you power drain, and so Centurion has an armor above, so he's just gonna power drain like every time he parries. So it's a really nice damage increase. But on the other hand, you have special burst lockdown, which means every time he throws a special attack, he armor breaks you, and then you just, like, he goes unblockable, and it just becomes a really scary fight. So you have to just, like, spam parry for the beginning, right? And then whenever you're ready to do your damage, you just, like, completely go in. You just, like, go completely in. You just do not care. If he goes unblockable, it's fine. You're, you're just going to be doing a ton of damage anyway. Like, look right here. I have, like, 10 Furies. I put on six plasmas and then it's just time to go to town to be honest and i'm doing a ton of burst damage on my last hit of my medium attack and now it goes unblockable but i'm just like you know what i don't care i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be as aggressive as possible and it works out he only went unblockable for a split second and we just like did the fight before he even did anything like impactful but to be honest i feel like there are better counters for this path i would say like a tech character that has multiple armor buffs is probably the best option just because they can afford to lose an armor up um so centurion cannot so that's why i have to play really weirdly um but yeah if you play around it he is really good for this lane just because his shocks get supercharged his plasmas get supercharged and it just like leads to a ton of damage so uh yeah I really like this path. It's a really fun path, especially when you use characters that only have one armor up and you just, like, play around it really weirdly. Um, but, yeah. I I said, but, yeah, like, twice in, like, the last 10 seconds, huh? I, I never realized, like, how weird I talk sometimes. Like, I literally repeat words for no reason, like, there. Uh okay. But moving on. This fight is going really well. Um, yeah. 
it's going really really nice i dropped the sv2 here didn't get a shock so my <laughs> so my incinerate didn't fuse which is a bit annoying but it's fine um and yeah now i still want to throw an sp1 because that's really annoying to deal with but she is just like absolutely melting and we just do one more medium attack and then yeah the fight's done really good times there really fast but now it's time for boss action. We have one really like weird boss, and then we have like four really smooth bosses. Um, this is obviously a smooth boss. This is the Caltrops and Foresight Hood. So it's like 800,000 health, but it's pretty much a standard hood, to be honest. Like you literally just hit him, right? <laughs> Caltrops were immune to, so that doesn't really matter. It's just a really straightforward fight, and Foresight just helps to make it a bit faster. And uh, yeah, it's just the damage is pretty nice like i love foresight it's such a nice node like right here we get foresight on we drop the sp2 and it just leads to a ton of damage like look at that that's so nice um the annoying thing is that hood when he throws the sp1 he like he like does a really big beam right and we have to like back off for that so we just lose our lock on pretty fast which is unfortunate but um it's whatever like we still managed to do the fight in a really fast time like we we're making really quick work of him right now so um here i was like okay so I'm, i can't let him throw the sp1 because he will just like stall out my lock on timer so i like i held block there to make sure that he would just stay aggressive towards me and uh yeah that fight was fast that was a really fast fight that was a minute and that was like eight hundred thousand health as well that is like absolutely absurd all right, and now I have a boss that I feel like a lot of people are struggling with. Like, whenever I check a line chest, <laughs> everyone just be asking, hey, who do I use for this Black Panther boss? And I'm like, so Centurion, man. He works so good for this matchup, and let me let me tell you why. So, he has buff synthesis, uh, precision, and armor up. So, so Centurion, he has an armor up that he gets back every 10 seconds if it's lost, and the true strike lasts for 15 seconds. So, pretty much, you would just always have a true strike active, and it just, like... It just hard counters him because like the sixth synth is why the black panther is annoying you know because you auto block or he gets auto blocked or no he auto blocks dude how did i how did i get that wrong two times in a row but yeah he auto blocks right and so that triggers explosive personality and then once that happens five times you just lose like 25 percent of your max health so it's like really annoying but with true strike it just becomes really really easy and this also has a physical resistance node, a 90% one, so, like, you can't really use champs that are, like, that do physical damage, and so Centurion does not. He is, like, pretty much all shock and plasma, so, like, I don't know. He's just, like, a really, really good counter for this. I do mess up in this fight, though, and I accidentally get pushed to my SP3, but it's honestly no big deal. It's, it's fine. Um, it just makes it a bit of a longer fight, but it is a boss anyway, so these things are always going to be a long fight, and he, like, it doesn't really matter. So, um, he's playing really passive at this point, and I get really annoyed, but we're still doing A-OK, -okay, right? Because we haven't died yet. <laughs> that, that's, what I, that's what I'm telling myself, at least. So, yeah, we dex that, we get the true strike back on, and then we just throw the SP3, so we get locked on again. And yeah, it's just a really, it's, it's looking, it's looking up from here because now we play a really long, slow, we apply power drain as well. So we can just go in and have to worry about anything. Um, I don't like how the SP3 like pushes them away, right? And then the lock on just starts right after. So you lose like half the duration of it, like right after throwing the SP3. It's really annoying. I'm like, why the, why, why? Like, what's the point of that? Just like put me close to the opponent. <laughs> That'll make it much easier for me. But um, yeah, the fight's almost done anyway, so it's fine. Um, this fight was really smooth. It went really, really well. I throw the SP2 there, get my lock on. Um, apply some more plasmas, and then I just finish it with a double medium. So yeah, a bit of a longer fight, but definitely one of the best counters for it, to be honest, because the true strike is just so, so good for it. Okay, now this boss is just so, so smooth. This is such a good Silver Centurion matchup. Um, so, so this Mr. Sinister has Arc Overload and Vigorous Assault, but what's funny is that he is really aggressive with his heavy attack, so you saw right there, I, like, baited one hit, and then he just threw the heavy immediately, so, like, the unblockable doesn't even matter, to be honest, because he just throws a heavy attack so often, so, um, yeah, it's just a really standard Soul Centurion matchup, like, you just bait out the SP1s, um, 
and yeah, like you, you just bait the SP1. So don't, don't let him throw the SP2 because the concussion is really annoying for Silver Centurion. Well, for any champ is annoying, but like it's especially annoying for Silver Centurion. So um, yeah, now he's unblockable, but it's fine. You can just bait out his medium attack and then go back in right after. And yeah, this is just like this is a Silver Centurion like matchup. This is what it looks like, y'all. This is crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's so good for this. He's just doing a ton of damage as well because it also has tech ascendancy, so you get increased base attack, which Silver Centurion really benefits from. And yeah, it, literally every note is just made for Silver Centurion, pretty much. Is all I'm trying to say. And yeah, he just makes such fast work of this guy. That was like a minute in lane. That was like a minute and ten seconds. Phenomenal. So Silver Centurion was really fast for that Mr. Sinister, and now this is the complete opposite of <laughs> um, this Hercules sucks. I, I cannot stand fighting Hercules. His Infury is annoying, his special attacks are annoying. Well, not really, but for Silver Centurion they're annoying because like he literally jumps into the air. How am I supposed to like stay locked on? <laughs> like look right here, how am I supposed to stay locked on? <laughs> um I guess you can just like go in right before he like does his like hammer down. Um which by the way I'm gonna say it. I need to address the elephant in the room. Why does this man have a sword and he never uses it? Can someone please, can someone please explain that to me? It's so, it's so weird. Like, why do you even have the sword then? What's the point? I just had to say it. I am sorry. Like, it bugs me all the time. And I'm also mad at Hercules because he just, like, sucks. He sucks to fight. I do not like fighting Hercules. I remember the Tyranny of Pain one. That was so annoying. Like, this is, like a toned down version of the attorney pain one but even a toned down version is still annoying um but yeah i chose Sir centurion for this because there is a node where every time you crit he goes unblockable so this is even the worst of it it gets even worse if you have a champ that crits but um so centurion does not crit so we never worry about the unblockable so it's just there's one of the annoying nodes out of the way now i have to just worry about the other two of them <laughs> so um yeah this is a really long fight, if you couldn't tell already, because um, I'm just trying to find ways to commentate over it, because it's a really, really long fight. Um, it's just, it's because of the Infuriate, man. Like, why did they do that? I know it's good for him on attack, but you can just not make it a thing that's on defense, because, like, everything else that Hercules has is really straightforward. It's just the Infuriate that in okay you know what it works the debuff works because it infuriates me all right like i i i hate that debuff so much um but yeah i managed to talk through like two minutes of this so yay me i'm doing i'm doing well as a commentator except for the fact that i like i can't talk but um yeah i finally get a medium attack with the lock on <laughs> like i didn't get one the whole entire matchup and the damage is disappointing because we have classes advantage so yeah everything is just like going south man i do not like this at all um but you know what it's fine it's fine oh no it's not fine i take it i take it i forgot about that i took a hit oh uh, Okay, things are not going well, y'all, but it's fine. We'll survive. Well, we do survive, or else I wouldn't have posted this, but, um, yeah. Uh, we're almost done. We're, 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 we're powering through. Now he's immortal, so we just need to bait that out. I'm just not gonna touch him. I just, like, I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with this guy anymore. I'm so over it. This is, like, a three-minute fight, man, but, you know what? I'll stand by it. Silver Centurion is a good option for this guy, because... He doesn't crit, and that takes away a really annoying part of the node. So that was a that was a three minute fight. So here's a fight that's not three minutes long. Um, this is the riot, and it's a new node. I forgot the name of it, but like it's pretty much um energy adoption, but without the energy part. It's just like the it's uh, it's called biotic something, but it's it like has it has poison, it has a rupture. I imagine it's gonna have bleed soon as well. And yeah, it's not too bad because um. It might be bugged in the sense that it just doesn't stack. <laughs> like, it's not stacking there, and I'm like, okay. So pretty much anyone works for this guy, to be honest. But uh, this also has shock vulnerability, so I was like, that's why I use Silver Centurion for it, because, like, Silver Centurion has shocks, right? So I'm just like, okay, well, we should be doing some pretty nice damage, and we do do some pretty nice damage, in fact. So, um, yeah, this is just a really good Silver Centurion fight. He just has a lot of shocks, 
and that's what you want for this or else it's going to be a bit longer than usual um then again it's not even that long of a matchup just because this dude is really really straightforward you can just like you literally just hit into him like I can understand the right note on a character that, like, has really annoying special attacks to dodge, but this is a Diablo, man. He literally just, like, he he does a lunge forward, then he, like, goes back. Like, that's not really hard to avoid while he's unblockable. Like, he does, like, a little punch, then he goes back, and then, yeah, it's, it's really straightforward. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, we're powering through, and we're doing pretty good so far. I, I totally missed that. <laughs> um, I, I don't know his heavy range that well, I guess. But um, well, you know what? It's fine. Because look at this. We dropped the SP1. And then, yeah. And that concludes the Silver Centurion Act 8 showcase. So let me know your thoughts um, on a lot of things. <laughs> let me know your thoughts on Act 8 as a whole. Let me know your thoughts on Silver Centurion. Um, but I will get mad if you say that he sucks because that's just how I am and he does not suck. So thank you for watching and yeah, that's gonna be it for me.